Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie. Merry Christmas, and welcome to episode number 71. I'm Jim the Knife Newbie Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting and a uh, mixture of stuff coming up today on the show. Bob's going to have a chance to talk a little bit about the uh, Microtech Troodon, and also he's got his Cold Steel wish list for 2020. We're going to uh, hear how the CRKT Ripple Rehab Project is going uh, as well as uh, some holiday me- messages. After all, today is Christmas Day. That's when the show comes out. So that's the reason we started by saying Merry Christmas. And we've got a knife junkie holiday wish along with a couple of uh, uh, wishes and messages and just different thoughts from a couple of our listeners that we're going to be sharing later on. So, Baba, a jam-packed edition midweek here. I wanted to talk about the Microtech Troodon uh, that I've been kind of... Uh griping about recently, Jim. Uh, This is the one I got off of Blade Forums. And as time goes by, I think maybe I got it under false pretenses. I think maybe the person that sold this to me either never picked up the knife, never tried it, or they got one over on me. Uh, I was excited about a good price, and and I jumped on it, and in my haste, I I got what I think is a bit of a lemon. Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you when it comes in and out the blade. Yeah, it sounds like um it sounds like a contraption Wiley Coyote would would have, right. you know. The spring just rings and and vibrates, you can feel it through the handle and and it was bumming me out and I was like, okay, well this will be a good opportunity for me to uh to to hit up Microtech's warranty service and check them out and I can do uh you know, pass along what I found out. In terms of uh, how their how their warranty service works, and uh, which I've heard is excellent, so I, I had and quick, so I had no uh, no real fear about that. It was just kind of a bummer. I got this new knife, and I kind of wanted it to around, you know, didn't want to have right. to send it right out. So I looked around and uh, didn't find too much on spring ring, or sometimes people call it spring sing, like the spring is singing. But I did come across uh, some advice on what to do. With an out, out the front, at least a Microtech like this, uh, when you need to clean it out. I've heard over and over with automatic knives, people say don't really use, uh, lubrication because it really can gunk up the works. It can attract dust and crap from your pocket. But, uh, this suggestion, I actually found a video on the Microtech website, uh, in which, uh, they blast REM oil, which is a light gun oil up into the uh, the opening in the front of the knife and just blast like a whole bunch in there. And then they take compressed air and blast it out, basically. To dry it out? Yeah, yeah, to get rid of the excess and to kind of just mm. like move stuff around. Right. And uh, I did that. And for, well, I'm kind of a knucklehead. And, and here's another example with this very knife about me not waiting and me being impulsive, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, instead of waiting and getting REM oil, which is what they suggest, which is a light oil, I just oh, grabbed no. the the gun oil <laughs> I have closest to me, hops number nine, and uh, spray it up in there. And then I'm like, wait a sec, is this a light oil? And I look at it and it says high viscosity. So I used the the wrong kind of oil in there, basically a lot thicker than I was supposed to. So at first it was working great, and I was like, I'm I'm a genius. I look at the, this is self reliance. Uh, I am, I am the spirit of America here. And, uh, and then after about a minute of flicking it in and out, it just slowed down like it was in an, like it was in a, um, swamp just trudging through the mire. And it just, mm. the blade was not locking out and it was not retracting. And that send, sent me plunging into despair, Jim. It sent me like, now, now I was like, not only do I have to send this into Microtech, but I have to say, yeah, I blasted some sort of crappy oil up in there and, uh, now it doesn't work. Can you fix it for free? You know, and right. move it to the top of the line. You know, <laughs> of course. You know. Yeah, sure. I'm sure. Chucky here. Absolutely. <laughs> let me let me just move this in front of all of these uh, these uh, combat you know folks who are sending theirs in. You know, so I can right. fix your silly problem. Uh, but anyway, I, I, so I decided I was going to leave it open. I left the knife open and just left it uh, on the cutting board in the kitchen, face down, 
so that gravity would would drain it. I did that for two days in a row, and then, like a miracle, kind of like how I learned my multiplication tables in second grade, they they just popped into my head all of a sudden. It was the same thing. All of a sudden, this knife is perfection. Huh. Yeah, it it had to go through that trial. It had to go through that tribulation and that uh that dark hour to to emerge in the light as a as a it seems like a beautifully tuned out the front. I'm wondering how long this is going to last. You right. know, is the is that ring going to come back? Is there a problem with the springs that I sort of muted down by spraying, you know, thick oil on it or you know what? But I have to say the way it feels it's very crisp. It doesn't feel like it's fighting any oil or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I think I may be a genius, Jim. I think I may have just uh, just beaten the lemon. Well, let's just say maybe you were lucky. Let's don't get <laughs> carried away with the genius uh, part. But yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no. Hey, you know, it, you know. I'm glad you tried it. You tried something and it worked, and and you, you had it in the back of your pocket. If it didn't, you could still send it in. And if it happens to come back in a week or two months, you can still send it back in and, and get it fixed. But uh, at least you'll have a happy holiday now with, with it singing properly. Yes, yes. Nestled snugly in my pocket in my holiday vest. Anyway, uh, yeah, this, this thing is cool and I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's on the mend. Uh, hopefully that lasts. Well, let's move along to the next topic for the show. We're going to move to cold steel. And we're not going to necessarily talk about a specific knife or review a knife or whatever. Uh, This is kind of an interesting twist, if you will. Looking ahead, New Year's coming, 2020 is here, and the knife junkie has his wish list for cold steel. Three items that the knife junkie wants to see. That's right. And actually, if I um, sit down and don't even think very hard, I could come up with many others. But uh, as we all know, cold steel has a huge product line. I mean, massive. They're very unabashed about the fact that they make weapons. So they have a lot of cool and exotic weapons from across time in their updated format, uh, in their updated materials. And uh, I love them for that. There aren't too many companies you can go to to get a modern-day version of a large folding Navaja or a uh, Viking Scramasax or, or a Viking axe, for that matter, or a Japanese samurai sword. What have you? Cold steel is just awesome. I don't care what you think. Cold steel is awesome. And here are three things that I think they would just take off with. People would love and buy them, and I would be the first in line. The first is the bulletproof Kevlar cold steel umbrella sword. So when when you're out in the rain and you have this umbrella up, the material that's actually guarding you from the rain is is some sort of high impact Kevlar that can stop let's say up to AK47 rounds. So you can you can guard yourself like a spy from bullets, but also hidden in the shaft of the umbrella is uh, as you would imagine a I don't know, say 29 inch sword. Uh, and it locks in there very tightly and it has maybe a two-way release just just so that you don't accidentally uh, push up your umbrella and, and unsheathe the sword. Uh, but yeah, this, this thing would be, uh, you could sell it for a lot of money and, and you could say, you could like, if you were cold steel, you could like gift it to a couple people in the CIA and then say, you know, the umbrella sword cane used by the CIA. Great marketing tactic. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Thank you. Um, that's something actually that, um, that's, uh, I drew a design for that years ago and, Thought I would oh, send it into Lynn Thompson and never did. Go ahead and send it into him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to get him on the show, so uh, maybe maybe that could be a, a another good little icebreaker. Got it. here. Do I have a product you could make for me? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> another one he could make for me is part of the XL Voyager series. We all know the Voyager series. It's it's a, a, a more value minded but super strong. Uh, folding knife series, and it also happens to be uh, founder Lynn Thompson's. I think that's one of his favorite knives because he's always carrying a, a, an XL Voyager. That's their five and a half inch bladed version in the Vaquero blade. The Voyager comes in a Tanto uh, point, a clip point, and then a Vaquero, which is uh, uh, a crazy sort of recurved uh, clip point blade. And um, I'm thinking it would be cool to see that knife 
with a crisp blade. It's not very much of a, of a stretch to go from the waviness of the, um, uh, Vakuro blade to the waviness of a crisp blade. Of course, it would have to be single edge just by nature of the fact that the spine would be out and exposed. But how cool would that be to have a wavy bladed Chris XL Voyager? Now, this idea, like, I like to think I'm, uh, you know, brilliant for thinking this up, but I am just perceptive. And I saw at the end of one of the Cold Steel uh, videos uh, with Lynn Thompson that they put up this year in 2019, it was in the fall, I believe. Uh, and at the end, he whips out a lar- uh, an XL Voyager and, and, and it happens to have a Chris blade in it. And I'm like, whoa, what's that? Is that? So I, I left a comment that, that le- that was, uh, unresponded to, but I left a comment asking, is this a, a prototype of something new or is this just a one-off that Lynn Thompson gets to carry around? So haven't heard anything about that, but how cool would it be to see an XL Voyager, uh, in Chris blade? I, I would love that. Do you know what a Chris is, Jim? It's, it's that uh, wavy Filipino sword that you've seen before. Hmm, so, okay. Yeah. All right. Didn't know what it was called, but yeah. Yeah. Lastly is the XL Recon 1 with a sax blade. Okay. How cool would that be? Uh, they haven't really done much in the way of sax blades. Well, they haven't done any, really. Or Warncliffe style blades uh, in folders. I know they have the new Scrama sax uh a uh, historical uh, reproduction of the large fighting knife of the Viking, or it almost looks like a short sword, but it's a straight-edged, straight-bladed knife. It, it almost looks like a, a flattened-out Bowie knife. And uh, I would love to see a Sax or a Warncliffe blade on the Recon. I think that would really round out that series. They have uh, the Tanto, which is unique from the clip point, which is not very unique from the drop point. The drop point and the clip point to me, or I think the, the drop they call a spear, but in any case, it's got pretty much the same edge profile. You know, if you look at it in silhouette, the blades are kind of the same, except for the clip on the, on the top side. So those two kind of cancel each other out in my mind. So they have one curvy and one straight with the Tanto with that penetration. How cool would it be to have the sacks in there? It could be a slightly curved, or straight up Warncliffe style sax. I think that would uh, that would make the Recon One series a well-rounded series. So three uh, pretty cool sounding ideas there for the knife junkie for uh, Cold Steel: the uh, bulletproof umbrella sword, uh, XL Voyager with a crisp blade, and uh, XL Recon One with a sax blade. So uh, maybe uh, something for everyone there on your on your <laughs> wish list for them. <laughs> That's right. I, I think I would like the umbrella. I, th- I think me too, because you can you, you can hide the fact that you're carrying around a sword, and you can be a gentleman and walk around and be dignified. But uh, you know, and if it goes down, you can you can. What'd you say? And not get wet. And <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I guess my question, and maybe is, would that be legal everywhere if you did have an umbrella sword? Well, I doubt it, Jim. Might not be legal <laughs> anywhere. I'm not right. sure. But hey, but just a great thing to have. Yeah, if it's the the umbrella the CIA uses, then you know maybe right, it could right. be excused. Anyway, it'd be great to hear what 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 other people would like to see Cold Steel make. I'm sure I'm not the only Cold Steel uh, fan out here screaming right. in the dark. So if you have some sort of fantasy Cold Steel product like I've just listed, comment or or leave a leave a message on the listener line. Let us know. I think it'd be awesome to hear. Seven two four four six six four four eight seven. That's the listener line number. Seven two four four six six four four eight seven. Or you can shoot Bob an email at bob at the knifechunky dot com. Or as he said, leave a comment on the uh, podcast app or on the YouTube video of the podcast. Uh, asked the question about whether it would be legal. I guess that would be the the question for uh, Doug Ritter over at Knife Rights. Yeah. And uh, you know, definitely now is the End of the year, a lot of time folks are uh, thinking about getting their taxable uh, or their, you know, their, their tax write-offs, charitable donations in place. And uh, KnifeRights.org is a uh, 501c3, so it might be uh, nice uh, to make a contribution there. So uh, something to think about. That's right. That's KnifeRights.org. All right, Bob, CRKT Ripple, you mentioned that last week or so. You're doing a rehab project for a friend. Just kind of wanted to uh, touch base, kind of see how that's going. Yeah, so uh, uh, my friend at work, 
uh, showed me his uh, Ken Onion uh, CRKT Ripple, and um, he loves this knife. It is kind of a fancy knife. It's got the milled out uh, sort of uh, alien looking handle, alien like the movie, you know, H.R. Giger style milling, and uh, it, it's on bearings, and it's just a beautiful little snappy knife. And uh, apparently his wife couldn't find the screwdrivers and uh, used that knife, his favorite knife, uh, as a screwdriver by accident, I'm told, and uh, gouged out a couple of divots from right near the tip. And uh, actually, you know, I've been freehand sharpening my whole, you know, since I started sharpening. And recently I got a uh, KME sharpener, which is uh, holds the, uh, what do they, what do they call it? A um, consistent angle sharpener, meaning it, uh, you clamp the blade in there, it holds it at the same angle, and then the stone slides back and forth on the blade at also at the same angle. And uh, so you can be very consistent across your edge. Well, before I got this, having to rehab the tip or towards the tip of a knife was just murder. And uh, especially to keep everything, um, all the angles straight just by hand. But uh, with the KME, I've been using this thing to to uh, basically grind out uh, with the roughest stone here, grind out the tip and get these gouges out. And uh, while I'm dealing with 8CR14 MOV, which I can only assume is slightly more, slightly stronger than 8CR13 MOV, I guess. I have no idea, uh, which, is an, uh, which is a steel I'm familiar with. And it's soft and workable and uh, gets nice and sharp. And I can see how quickly and easily... Uh, this little notch is being buffed out even, even after, you know, about 15 minutes of work on it. And, uh, so I took the whole knife apart and I gotta say, it's, uh, it's a really nicely little, uh, nicely made knife. The, there's a liner on one side, a steel liner on one side, and it is so nicely skeletonized. It's got what, eight, uh, seven holes drilled out of it and, uh, it's nice and light. And then the, um, caged, bearing uh system is really cool it's a little bit different from uh, what i've seen in like my zts and such uh, which just look like washers with um, bearings kind of embedded in them these are more like removable races that have uh, the bearings inside of them and they notch into the uh, liner and the handle of the of the knife itself instead of uh uh, so in, instead of kind of floating freely between the two, it locks into the handle side and the ball bearings race around in a little, in a little grooved race. So it's a pretty cool design. It's the first time I've seen it. I think this is just an old version of the, um, Icoma Korth, the IK, IKBS system. Uh, but anyway, uh, th this Ripple knife is awesome. I would highly recommend it. I know it's affordable and it can be found at places, you know, like, uh, like Lowe's and Walmart, as well as, you know, any of your online retailers. But it is a really nice knife. My one gripe with it is the um, is the one position tip down pocket clip wah, wah, and uh, the positioning of it is right on the very edge of the top of the knife near the pivot. And it always seems to be bending off the frame just visually, even though it's not it. I don't like the position. It's kind of a hot spot. Other than that, this knife is pure gold and i can't wait to have it totally rehabbed and uh nicely lubed up and ready to go for my buddy so uh you know with a full-time job with doing podcasts with doing videos with having a family life how long does you know this type of rehab project take yeah exactly this this is uh you know this is an hour or an hour and a half project soup to nuts but it'll take me weeks you know <laughs> uh, i'll noodle with it no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let it take weeks i told him you know, after the holidays, boom, I'll have it for you. And, and I, I you know, so I, I don't want to be holding on to someone else's knife for too long. That's well, you, know. you got to factor in uh, fiddle time and fidget time and uh, appreciation time, you know, and that's right. Quality assurance time just to make sure it's working okay. <laughs> I had to make sure it drives my wife crazy when we watch movies. So I've been flipping that's it right. all week long. Yeah, that's right. Guess what it does. Moving on to something else, another topic you wanted to do a little tease. About something? Well, yeah. Uh, a recent uh, Thursday Night Knife show? Yeah, on a recent Thursday Night Knife show with Zell, uh, Zellrick42, uh, Terrell Todd, we brought up the issue of, um, for lack of a better term, the H HRC police, the 
uh, the um, knife reviewers uh, on YouTube who are doing research into the Rockwell hardness, the actual Rockwell hardness of production knives that are that are coming out and kind of uh, ensuring that what we're being told in terms of how blade steels are heat treated uh, is the case. And it's an interesting and genuine actual knife world topic of discussion. It's a hot topic, you know what I mean? Some people are not so happy with what's going on. Uh, uh, some others not so happy with what's going on and other people on, on the other side finding it uh, interesting and valuable information. So I'm going to have uh, one of those, one of those gents on the show to have an interview and just to talk and find out where this person comes from. And uh, I know this person happens to use knives every day for a living. Uh, so, uh, is not, is not as much of a desk commander as myself. So it'll be interesting to hear, um, how he kind of came across this kind of, um, well, this is going to sound heavy handed, but calling to, to do this kind of research into, into these products. So it'll be great to talk to him. I don't, I'm not sure we haven't locked a date in, right. uh, but I'm pretty sure he's into doing it. And, uh, and I'd like to, I'd like the Knife Junkie podcast to be a platform for everybody. I'd, I want to be, uh, I want to hear everybody's side of everything. I want to talk to everybody. Right. So right. I'm trying not to take sides. Of course, I have my own opinions about things and, and I'll state them when I feel it. But uh, in something like this, I'm not interested in taking sides. I'm interested in finding out what's actually going on because I'm low information right now, you know, so I want to well, get information yeah. from the horse's mouth. Well, and I'm, I'm no information. If so <laughs> yeah. if you're low information, it'd definitely be a topic that both of us could learn for. And as I said in the intro to this podcast, the podcast is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting. So yep. if it's got to do anything with knives, we want to talk about it. We want to hear about it. And as you said, you, we, we may have an opinion, but that doesn't mean we want to stifle anyone that disagrees with our opinion. We want to hear about it. Yes, yes, that's true. And, and also it's a good way to, it's a good way to practice the abstract art of disagreeing and the abstract art of discussing and debating because, uh, we all know that, that this hobby is important to us because of the satisfaction it brings us. But we also all know that it's on the scale of important things, it's not that high. It's not high enough to actually uh, uh, bring us to animosity over knife world issues. So I think it's a, a great idea to just kind of talk. And, uh, you know, if we can have a civil discussion about knife topics, knife hot topics, then maybe that can scale up and we can have civil discussion about other things we disagree about. All right. There you go. Did the knife junkie strike a nerve with you with that comment? <laughs> No, just teasing. But if he did, or if you agree or disagree, call the Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. Leave us a comment or a question, and we'd love to play it back on a future episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. And speaking about that, we requested comments, questions, thoughts, holiday wishes, whatever you wanted to do so that we could play them or read them on this episode of the show, our Christmas Day show. So we've got a couple of folks, some uh, some brave souls who not only uh, left us a voicemail message, but uh, I think one or maybe two uh, uh, kind of email written comments that uh, that Bob will read. But uh, first, I think, Bob, you wanted to start with your own holiday wish, kind of a Merry Christmas wish. And before you start, I'll just say again, Merry Christmas. You know, thank you so much for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast and putting up with me, the Knife Newbie with my limited knowledge and not understanding what's going on a lot of times. But thank you for allowing me into the knife world and uh, being a part of uh, my journey to uh, start a knife collection. So thank you and Merry Christmas to knife newbies and knife junkies out there. Nice. I just wanted to say we started doing this about a year ago. And in that period of time, I've gotten to meet people uh, through this that have just uh, enriched my life. Uh, I'm talking about people that I've interviewed on the show. I'm also talking about people who have watched the show and watched the videos and commented and have started dialogues with me. Even if it's just a one line back and forth every once in a while, it means something to me. And uh, I have to be 100% honest. I really didn't think it would going into this. I, I really didn't, didn't know how much um, viewers and listeners and, and uh, whether they participate or not just – just knowing there are people out there you know, listening to the same stuff that I think is fun and important, 
it really uh, enriches my life, and I feel like I've grown a lot in the last year. So I want to say thank you to everybody who listens to the show and uh, who listens to the podcasts and watches the videos and uh, and comments and just uh, just let me say I love you guys and uh, and there there will be much more to come uh, this year, and I'm looking forward to some people we have in the wings that we'll be talking to. I also, uh, if anyone happens to be listening to us from uh, far afield, far away from the United States, uh, if you're a service member or just away from home, I, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas and and uh, we all miss you and thank you for serving and thank you for protecting us and taking on that responsibility. And, uh, and we'll see you back here uh, next Christmas. Uh, we love you. And... That's what I have to say. All right. Very well said from the Knife Junkie. Uh, But we do have some additional voices we want to add to the show. Who do you want to start with, Bob? We'll we'll start with a a call to the listener line. So your choice. Who do you want to start with? Well, let's start with our good buddy, Alex. Alex Tissot from Alex's Knife Box. Hey, everyone. This is Alex from Alex's Knife Box. So I'm just calling in for the Christmas wish and... Just wanted to say that for Christmas, I would like some more subscribers. So check me out, Alex underscore Knifebox on Instagram and Alex's Knifebox on the YouTube channel. As far as Santa Claus bringing me some new knives, uh, I tried that last year, but he said I had too many. So I'm not really expecting anything. Uh, So I bought myself some more, and I'll have some more coming up for the channel. Love you, Jim. You're the best. The man behind the board. Bob, you're the man. You are awesome. You guys make the most fantastic knife podcast out there and still my favorite. So thank you, guys. Well, thank you, Alex. It's been a pleasure meeting you and uh, becoming your friend and uh, and doing these Thursday Night Live shows with you. It's been a blast. So thanks for that holiday message. Yeah, and you mentioned Thursday Night Knives, Bob. Today is Christmas Day. We are not going to do a show tomorrow. If you're listening on Christmas Day, we're not going to be doing a show on Thursday, December 26th. We're, we're taking this week off from Thursday Night Knives, but we'll be back next Thursday uh, with, another, with another great show. So uh, maybe now a, a, a email or a, yeah. a text message, something like that? So this is, this is our, our very oldest friend, the first person who ever got in touch with us uh, about this podcast, Cabin Man on oh, yeah. uh, Instagram. Awesome guy. It seems to have a awesome collection. He has a few knives that I that I lust after. Chief among them that Bowie knife, uh, that BR uh, Bark River knives Bowie knife. But anyway, um, he was trying to get through. I guess we had a problem with our lis- listener line uh, two weeks ago, and he was trying to get through to tell us what his most carried 2019 blade was because that's what we were talking about. Right. And uh, so he sent me this message. Uh, I would have to say it's the Cold Steel Recon One with the clip style point. Nice choice. In S35VN, I am like you. Most of my favorite everyday carry knives are in the 4-inch blade length, and I have a lot of them. The Recon 1 wins my pocket because of the weight and size. Also, it must be the best all-arounder in the 4-inch blade category. When you consider size, weight, cost, eye appeal, and steel choice, it's pretty darn hard to beat. And I have to agree with you, Cabin Man, uh, my... my, uh, old cold steel recon one in clip point with the stripped down os8 blade rides around with me every day in my backpack and then i have one uh, close at hand in the bedroom uh, just incidentally in the s35 i love that knife and it's a classic and i'm sure it's never going to go away all right so that was a uh, cabin man on instagram yes sir we, we did say we were going to promote the different channels of folks, and I can't remember in case we did. Alex Alex's Knife Box, that's on YouTube. So Cabin Man on Instagram. And uh, now another uh, 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 voicemail off the listener line. Yeah, next we have uh, Edwin Callow, who um, has been a uh, frequent commenter on Thursday Night Knives, and uh, I follow him. He's Cal Oper. I, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it on um instagram he's just got oh god i love his collection his stuff and i can always tell immediately uh that it's that it's his uh he's he's got some incredible uh custom emersons anyway here's edwin hi guys this is edwin i want to wish you your family and listeners a merry christmas and happy new year 
thanks for all your work and content. You know, I really enjoy the interviews, conversation with the new makers, the background information of them, even the site shows and news and all that, man, really on point. Um, in terms of what I asked Santa, uh, you know, I really want to go to my first show. If I need to pick one, that will be the U.S. and Gathering next year. So I'll ask Santa and, more importantly, Miss Santa, if they approve that. It will be awesome to meet some of the legends like Ernie, Versuola, and all that, you know. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under Kalo, P-R, K-A-L, zero P-R. I'm usually posting daily there, pics of my night like we all do, okay? Uh, well, that's it. Merry Christmas. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Edwin. We appreciate you for your your past participation and your continued participation and support of the Knife Junkie podcast as well as Thursday Night Knives and appreciate you leaving uh, leaving us a message for this show. Yeah, and we can't wait to see your next smart alecky comment on Thursday Night Knives. <laughs> <laughs> that was Bob DeMarco. <laughs> Keep them coming, Edwin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> next, we have uh, Stu, our good friend Stu. Uh, Stu's the gentleman who gifted me that amazing uh, Delica Warncliffe serrated knife that now lives on my person. Stu carries around a serrated Endura in his back pocket. He's in law enforcement. And uh, incidentally, he also carries a uh, Raider Hogue. Great guy. He's up in Vermont. I love Vermont, especially in the fall and the winter. And, uh, well, thank you, Stu. Here you go. Hey, Jim and Bob. It's uh, Stu from Stone and Steel up in Vermont. Just calling to wish you guys a happy holidays and to say um, keep up the good work. And that's uh, what I'm thankful for you this year is your your guys' knife show. It's the best one on YouTube for sure. I also want to let your listeners know if they're in Vermont um, in March, I'll be at the uh, Gun and Outdoor Sportsman Show at the Fairgrounds in Essex Junction, Vermont, on March 21st and 22nd. So if they interested in picking up a knife, I will be there. Thanks. Happy holidays. And uh, as we've mentioned, I think once or twice before, Stu actually uh, what buys and sells knives too on the side. So yeah, be he's nice got to a, uh, listeners to support him. Yeah, exactly. He's got a company called Stone and Steel uh, up in Vermont, and uh, yeah, he sells a lot uh, at fair uh, county fairgrounds and uh, what am I trying to say? Gun shows and knife shows, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, gun shows and knife yeah, shows. Yeah, I those, forget yeah, those. Forget that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and last but not least, uh, uh, what do you call that? I'm trying to think of the word when it's family and you intersperse that with business uh, nepotism or something like that. But, <laughs> yes. but no, not really. It's it's a brother being supportive, right? Yes, it's my brother. And uh, he's been supportive of my knife habit in many, many, many a generous and uh, cool way over the over the years. And uh, anyway, here you go, Vito. Hi, this is Vic DeMarco. I'm not quite a knife junkie like my brother Bob, and I'm definitely not a knife newbie person like Jim. I'm more of a blade enabler because I buy Bob a lot of knives, and I give him an excuse to buy a lot of knives for me. I'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to the entire knife junkie community, and I'd like to thank all of Bob's listeners and all of Bob's guests. I'm very proud of what he's been able to accomplish this year with Jim and would like to request an all funny knife stories supplemental episode. We could talk about the time that you stabbed me with the cold steel spike that you had just gotten me as a Christmas present. That was pretty awesome. Or we could talk about the time I nearly chopped my leg off with my Essie Junglis. That was pretty awesome too, except for the sound of my mother-in-law screaming. Anyway, Merry Christmas everybody, Happy Holidays, and have a happy and safe New Year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vic. At this point, I've seen what you've gotten me, and thank you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, You would love it regardless. <laughs> I, uh, maybe this is a good excuse for me to call him and find out early. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I can record this and be genuine. Well, whatever. Maybe we'll <laughs> do better planning next year. Yeah, we say? exactly. All right. Hey, listen, that's about going to wrap it up. That's all we've got planned for this podcast. But again, to everyone that... Uh, wrote in, called in. Thank you so much for your participation. If you didn't, shame on you. We encouraged you. We wanted you to. So when we ask you to call and leave a comment, do so. The listener line, 724-466-4487. If you want to see us or hear us do more of these uh, 
type of audience participation shows or segments or whatever in the podcast, leave that on the listener line or yeah. email Bob at Bob at the knife junkie dot com and give us some suggestions. Jim, what do you I okay, so Jim edits the show and I don't wanna I don't wanna be presumptuous, but how about every time someone leaves a message, we put it on the show? Would Absolutely. That be? Okay. Absolutely. All right. So we need at least one person per week to call in and leave some sort of a message that can be aired on our show. And, uh, and we'll keep it clean. Put it up there. Yeah. <laughs> keep it clean. Keep it about <laughs> knives. Um, keep it adoring. And um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We've said this before. Be sure to, uh, you know, if you've got a YouTube channel, drop the, the name, the channel name. If you've got a business, promote it, website, promote it. Uh, that's what we're all about, wanting to uh, not only get some participation, but uh, share the share the wealth, if you will, spread the promotion for everybody listening. And, uh, you know, please uh, make me work harder and, and edit in <laughs> two, three, four comments a show. That'd be that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Make them work harder. I am doing this for free, you know. <laughs> not for long, Jim. <laughs> Onwards and upwards, sir. That's right. By the way, if you've got a podcast and you want an editor, call me. Oh, my but God. But anyway, shamel best. shameless plug. All right, enough for rambling on Christmas Day. Let's get back to the uh, the hot cocoa and the Christmas presents and the family fun. So what do you say, Bob? Yep, yep, I'm going to have me some eggnog. Jim? All right. Merry Christmas, sir. Merry Christmas, buddy. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. 